welcome to Expression and Painting with Paul Creamy. Well, tonight we're going to do a painting. Last week, uh, last month, a couple of weeks ago, I lost track. One of those days. We did that 10 paintings in the show, half an hour. And I watched it last night on the Facebook. And I thought it was interesting. Very, very interesting. Tonight, I brought two paintings. I, I painted this painting. I went around my studio photographing all of these silly uh, flower arrangements I have. And I was fascinated by the, the play with the pink and the black and the, the table and the green. So I painted this last week. And I love the texture in it. It's got lots and lots of paint. It's happy. It's a cheery painting. And that's what I liked about it. So I painted it. I also got another one. Get it out of the way so nothing happens to it. Uh, I've been looking at this field stone wall photograph for a long time. And I just decided, well, this is the day to do it. Last Saturday it was kind of quiet. Nobody around. So I painted this painting. It's a place. I can't remember if it's um, in Maine. It must have been in Maine. Everything's in Maine that I photographed late, a couple of years back. It has this beautiful wall. And I love the depth of it, the way the flowers and the wall goes back and disappears into this area. It holds your attention. Really a quite neat little painting. So tonight, I took a photograph about a month ago in situate over by the spit, but it's from the land where the boat yard is. This is the photograph. It was uh, winter, and it's kind of got an orange-pink sky and very, very soft. My new camera person, Missy, picked this photograph, so it's her fault if we don't make it work. It's my fault if we do. I mean, I, I get the credit if we do make it work. So I'm going to put this over here, put the canvas up, and we'll start. I got a black canvas. I was going to do a flower arrangement on this canvas, but it never happened. It's my brother's flowers from his funeral, and every time I took out the photograph, I got emotional. So I couldn't, uh, I haven't been able to do that painting. I'm not going to get into it. I'm just not going to do it for a while. I'm going to wait. So I'm going to start tonight by blocking in the sky, in the water, and then we'll do this. So just get going here. And don't take yourself serious when you start this thing. Just put the paint down. The whole thing will take its own course and we'll be off and running. The one thing I forgot to bring tonight, and I usually always bring it, I brought, I use white gesso to use, I mix it with the paint, and I didn't bring it tonight. I got all excited because Missy was coming with me and I uh, wanted to get over here. We we're going to have a new camera person. It's good to have all of these people on the camera because it's quite a chore and they do a great job. We got Ted and we got Andrew and we got Missy. We got Bob in the back room with Colleen and we're off and running. Colleen's the best. She just posted last show on my Facebook, Paul Creamy on Facebook. And it's a half an hour, and I spent half an hour talking about 10 paintings. I sat down last night, and I don't get to watch these city uh, unless they're posted, because I don't have the cable. So now that Colleen puts them up on YouTube, and uh, yeah, it's Expression and Painting, on YouTube by Paul Creamy, you get to see these shows. And it really blows my mind to watch these shows. I said, God, these guys on the camera are great. Hard working, in tech, fantastic. And we got Missy, so she's going to do a good job. I know she is. So we're just covering the canvas. We got the black in the canvas. People say, well, why do you paint it black and then you cover it? Because the black makes the paint come alive. A 
I should put the photograph where I can see it. Nice. So when you do a painting, it's like taking a photograph. It's always in thirds. Third, a third, and a third. And if you have that mindset, I have it built in. But I know you people out there that are learning about painting. It isn't, well, the way I paint, it's the way I see and the way I'll teach you to see. If I teach you how to see with your own eyes, you don't need me. You don't need the uh, instructor. You don't need the guy with the yik-yak talking all the time. You just need to do the work. Get the paints, get the canvases, and paint. So it, it's all about seeing. This particular photograph has all of these gorgeous colors. Little orange, little pink. I should put a little red out. I put everything out but red. Let me see if I have it. Oh my God. Yeah, this says brilliant red. We'll put some of that out. So you think after 25 years of doing this show that I'd be, I'd be prepared. You know something? I'm never prepared. I love to flow. Go with the flow. So let's get a little extravagant. We'll do a little extravagant. It's not going to be this color when it's done, but you never know. Gonna paint away here, having a good time. And you know something? Don't think about it. Just do it. I think there's so many people spend so much time thinking about what they're going to do, they never get to do it. Painting is doing, like driving the car. You sit there in the driveway and you think about driving and you don't turn the car on, you don't get very far. Think about that, you know, when you're gonna do a painting. Just put the paint on the canvas and go to work. I'm mixing a little dark blue with the brown. I want it to be a little darker like that. So I just darken it down a little bit. Of course, this brush is way too big. Let me get rid of this monster. Let's fool around with the sky. But you know what? I have the blower. Take out some of the moisture. And that's just a tiny little sketch. Nowhere, nowhere near anywhere where we're going, but I want to look at it. This is a reducing mirror. What it does is it pushes back the painting and helps you see where you're going and helps you to see the stuff that you want to see. There's a lot that I want to see. I want to see if I brought one of my, I see the small one. Let's try this one here. Oh, here it is. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I love these brushes. Oh, whoever invented this brush, God love them. Great. I can still see Bob Ross talking on happy little feather brush. 
he was a good artist. God bless him. So I have three colors of blue, and there's a lady out there, she wants me to tell you the size. This is a, I call it a cloud brush, size eight. It's kind of like a feather brush. And the most important thing in this whole painting, I think, is the sky. So let's work on the sky, because all the bottom stuff is relatively easy. And I don't want to get done with this before everybody can make me look like I'm a great painter by painting this thing in no time. Because Missy picked it, and it's a beautiful photograph, and she has great taste. She picked one that was even more difficult, but I'm kind of a wimp. I didn't want to do it. I had a tough day today. My daughter has been struggling with a whole lot of issues with the sun, and she's got it all squared away. I went to court today and straightened it all out. Thank God. God has been good to us, very good today. Power of prayer works. You see, I keep applying, I keep rubbing, and I keep applying. I keep putting it down. Acting like I know what I'm doing. And you know something? I have been painting since I was seven years old. I have painted so many ocean and cloud paintings. They were my passion when I was a kid because I could do them. It was one of the first things I could do. And even as well as I could do them, I still went and studied with the master. And after a couple of days in his classes, he threw me out, told me I was too talented. Didn't hurt my feelings because he gave me my money back. See, if you're, you're trying to do all of this soft, quiet stuff, take your time. Look at it. Wow, it's, it, this is starting to have that kind of, well, it has these silly little trees over here. Let's put some of them in. Big cluster of. Got a lot of orange in it too. We'll throw some orange in here. Put the dark on the bottom. Then we'll put the orange on the top. Hopefully. Now, I did learn this from Bob Ross. I, I got to say that. I stole this from Bob Ross. Happy little trees. I mean, every time I watched him, honest to God, every time I watched Bob Ross, I fell asleep. And I said to myself, if I ever do a painting show, I'm going to raise my voice once in a while. I'm going to make people up. Because I know I put them to sleep. I, if you're good at this, you're going to put somebody to sleep. That's part of the whole thing. I think if you, <laughs> you want to watch somebody paint and you fall asleep, then he's achieved his goal, because that's part of the whole thing.
you got to get these lines. This painting here, if you get these lines right, then it works. You're not killing yourself. You're doing it. You get the lines to work. That's what I liked about the photograph. To me, it's very, very contemporary. It could be abstract. I mean, there's not much difference between realism and abstraction. I have a friend, close friend, who has a house on Damon Point in Marshfield Hill. I haven't told mo many people this, but he has a dock running from his house out to the m end of the marsh on the mouth of the North River. And for the last seven or eight years, he's brought me 171 birdhouses that I've painted for him. And a lot of people out there don't have a clue who's painted these birdhouses. And it's been me. I was sitting having croissants with my friends at the French Memories one day, and they were talking about how incredible these birdhouses were at this Damon Point house. And I says, oh, those are those crazy abstract ones? Yeah. I says, yeah. I think they're terrible. He says, oh, no, Paul, they're fantastic. He's French. Got this great accent. They're fantastic. And I says, ah, okay, I'll admit they're good. You know why they're good? And he says, why? Because I painted them. And he started laughing. He got the biggest kick out of that. Yeah, he, he brought me these birdhouses, and I said, oh, I'm not a birdhouse painter. He says, just do anything you want on them. Well, it wound up on Chronicle. And it's Marshfield Hills, I mean, Damon Point in Marshfield Hills, and uh, Chronicle came down and did a, on the birdhouses, it did a whole show. And it's been on the cover of three or four magazines, national magazines. <laughs> of course, never told anybody I was doing one doing the birdhouses. You know, step back a little, take a look. I might even sit down for a second. You see how this thing's starting to take shape? I'm doing all this yik yakking, and it really is starting to take shape. I want to get my little uh, reducing mirror, take a look. <coughs> One of these days I'm going to miss the chair, wind up on the floor. I know it. I don't think I did a very good job <laughs> putting that line across, so I'm going to have to straighten it out, which is no big deal. So, fixing it is no big deal. See, you just get a couple of things and it looks like marsh. This has got to be real dark. In fact, I should get some black. Let me see if I can find the black. A lot of artists won't use black. I'm not afraid of it. I love it. it to me, it's part of painting. Where I'd use the black is on the foreground. See, because I want that foreground to really jump out.
All right. So we got some of this down. We've got sort of the sketch. on the little trees. See if I got a small one of these. I know I brought it. I do. What I've done is I've mixed the orange with the brown in a little cream color three of them together. Got these. I got some of these real dark, dark green trees, like they have in Italy, like evergreen. They're real super dark. I ever, oh, when I saw them in in pictures, I used to say those trees couldn't be that dark, until I went to Italy and saw them, and I said, oh my God, they're darker than I thought. They're incredibly beautiful. Uh, you just stick a couple in, a little pointy on the top. And then I'm going to try to make those trees a little less blobby. Oh, you know that field stone wall and everything? That, that, that whole entire painting is done with little dots. You know, it makes it work so much nicer. It has that really cool feeling. Different than this. So this is how I do ninety nine percent of my paintings with with a brush. And I stand here and I mix the paints and I dab it. And I just keep doing that and doing that and doing it. So it's got a couple of these green trees over here too. So let's pop a couple of those in. I don't know if I got this line. Let me take a look. I'd like to get that a little better. Let me, before I go putting any trees in. 
let's define that a little. Make it a little more defined. It's got this real beautiful orange. I think that's why Missy liked this picture so much, because she liked the orange. I don't blame her. When I took the photograph, I loved it. Oh my God, the whole ground is orange. See, this is how I work. Endless, endlessly tabbing, dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. Okay. Oh. A little break in the orange here. Let me see if I can fix this. In this area here is super dark. So we're going to go a little darker here. Always looking, always trying to follow a pattern that's in front of your eyes if you see it, if you photograph it. I think that that's one of the wonderful things about photographs. If you photograph it, you have it captured, then it starts to work for you. Let me try this. I love the water. Let's see if we can get the water to look like water. Then it has this whiteness here. My cue. I need my cue. What a cute cure. Oh my God, I need her. She's the best. So I'm mixing three different color blues. 
thylo and a two other a blue blue and a blue and a blue all that blue because I want it to have that water look in the winter already half an hour can you imagine Time goes by fast when you're having fun. What we've done now is we've blocked it in. Now we're going to start to do some of the detail. We're going to go back and do some more with the sky. Pull around. I'm going to make that orange line a less, a lot less. It's kind of fat. I don't want it to be that fat. And I want it to get skinnier here and stay fatter down there. I have it just backwards right now, so I mean, that's the way I do things. I don't know, but I'll change it. I'm gonna get my small brush. Clean it off. And I'm going to go in here, mix the color. The black pot can be a little thicker because that's the edge of the marsh. And boy. Good. That looks really good. I'm going to step back and take a look. Yeah, I'm liking it. I want to give it a little more definition in the bottom. Actually, I can make it a little darker up here. Okay. 
Let's get a little daring and go after the sky again. Never be afraid to attack it because you know something, you're in charge. Your, this is your canvas, you're the painter. Nobody's going to see it until you're done with it. So you can do as many things as you want with it. Eventually you'll get it right. I never panic, I just go after it. And I know eventually if I keep rubbing it and pushing it, and it's gonna settle down, it's gonna be what I want. Put a few of those little floating clouds. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. See why they call these cloud brushes? The clouds just appear. It's amazing. All right, let's get some of that color in there. Hopefully, we can make it work. I'm never skeptical. I'm just, I just know that it's so delicate this whole process of painting can get very delicate in certain spots. So I'm concentrating, I'm not talking, I apologize. I get caught up in my own thinking, silly me. But that happens when you're a painter sometimes. You, you become, your soul gets wrapped up in this whole thing and all of a sudden you say, wow, where was I? What happened? And just keep applying the paint putting it on, and eventually you'll get to that real soft, pinky, not quite Pepto-Bismol. You know, that's, uh, some of that stuff is in the water. So, we'll put a little in the water. Not as much over here as it is over there. Mm. 
Where's my tiny one? Here it is. I want it to be a little more delicate. It looks like a big blob right now. Won't be in a second, hopefully. We'll just go in here. So this is what painting's all about. You put it in, you put, take it away, you put it down, you take it away. Eventually, you get to a certain spot and you say, ah, it's there. And you keep going over and over and over and over. So painting, to me, and to anybody that wants to paint, you have to put the effort in. You have to really, you have to put the effort in. It requires time, it requires patience, and it requires the energy to believe that you can do it. And you can do it. You're seeing me do it right in front of your eyes. And I've been doing this stuff since I was seven, and people say, well, you've been painting your whole life, that's why you're so good at it. I said, well, I wasn't always good at it. I had to work at it. I mean, I know people that are a million times more talented than I am, and they don't paint anymore, and I can't understand it. I think that they just got frustrated because they felt like their talent was so good that they should have made all this money at it. And You know, if you're going to do painting for the money, then don't do it at all. Do it for the, the love of doing it, and the money will come. But they say, do what you love, love what you do, and then it'll, then it'll all work out. Wow, that got a little dark up there. Let me go back and go, go over that a little. I see it drying, and I don't like the way it's drying. I want it to be softer. So I'm going to go in there and make it softer. Right in here. And this is what I do, and this is what you can do too. If you just keep attacking it and you keep doing what you do, eventually the whole thing will work out. I have to see it. Let me dry it a little. See, this may not be finished tonight as easy as this painting looks. Some of the detail, some of that real quiet essence of the sky, you just gotta keep going over it and over it until you get to that spot. And all of a sudden when you're there, you'll know 
and you stop. Put the brush away, sit in the rocking chair, and say how good you are. I always thank God because I know he's in charge. He's the giver, I'm the receiver. Oh, it's, it's drying, oh good, thank you. It's drying to the point where it's starting to get softer, and that's what I like. You can, yeah, see, coming back here, I can see it now. Let me go back and see, there's a few things you can do. I'm going to go over it again, but I'm going to go over it real subtle. Just keep concentrating on making it softer and softer. Eventually, all of a sudden, you'll be there. So we got these dark trees here again. So let's go back to those. A couple of those trees right here that are in the water. And they're, they're sitting right about here. There's another one here. And there's a third one right there. So this is the tallest. This goes above the orange line, so. And so all we're gonna do is put a dash here. Tiny one there. A dip there. See, now, detail is an illusion too. Everything is an illusion when it comes to painting. Everything, I don't care what. You can make it all work by just concentrating on what you're doing and how you're doing it. We didn't give any color to the foreground, so we're going to throw a little color in the foreground, make it look like it's marshy.
Always, always, always. Just uh, keep, keep dabbing away. They'll look like trees, I promise you. You just keep on going after them. Everything's starting to have that marshy look. I want that little orange to be right on the top. So I'm putting it on the edge of the brush so that hopefully that it'll pick it up. Good. Good. going underneath the bright orange. I mixed a little with the cream paint. So I'm picking up some of the lighter marsh. Do the edge of the marsh. I'm going to make it black. All right. I'd like to put some of that picture back. I want to put some of this water behind like this. I 
And I love it when you can see the water line. So if you come along and you just put a touch of white along the edge like this. This is what I learned from this Ed Harrigan when I was a kid. The only reason I took his class because when he painted water, honest to God, it was so wet looking. It drove me nuts. He had a knack. Three minutes. So we've taken this little photograph and we've fooled around with it tonight. We've got these trees on this right hand side and they're not quite finished. To, I'm going to go up the and I want to get some of the foreground to be a little more scrubbly and a little more um, kind of like the marsh. Kind of a, like go in and build it up a little like this. And put a whole bunch of different tones in there so that it has a, a real busy surface. I thought it was a little bit flat. For me, from somebody else, they'd probably say, oh, it's perfect, leave it alone. I, mean, I can hear Ann back there saying, get away from it, Paul, you're done. <laughs> I'm never done. I take these paintings back to the studio and they, 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 they get transformed. Sometimes they go to another place, hopefully. But we've got just a couple of minutes left. So I'm trying to show you that you, you can do a lot with the foreground as well. We had a photograph. It's right here. I'll put it up. It, it's the marsh in situate over by the spit. And we've painted it tonight. It's still got a long way to go, but it's kind of like a sketch. It has a nice feeling. You can almost feel that uh, you're standing there quite, I mean, uh, I think that I got a little carried away with this big blob right here, but I'll fix that when I get to the studio. In fact, I could probably fix it now just by touching it a tiny bit. All right, we're all done. We're coming to the end. I want to thank you. This is Expression and Painting by Paul Creamy. God bless and good night.